Okay, this is a knife I forged out of a railroad spike. One that looked much like this. Um, forged it, finished it, handle, very pleased with it. One problem with railroad spike knives, one critique of them, is you don't know what kind of steel was in the railroad spike. It might not be a high carbon steel. Uh, if it's not a high carbon steel, it doesn't get hard enough. If it doesn't get hard enough, it won't either take an edge to begin with or it won't hold an edge. So when I made this, I did a couple of techniques to add carbon to the blade after the blade was forged. Uh, look up case hardening, um, carburization. Um, tried to take a video of it, but didn't turn out really well. So I'm going to put this through a couple of tests and see how it turned out. So for right now, I've given it as sharp of an edge as I can get it. I'm not the best at sharpening blades, but it cuts through common printer paper. There's just a single sheet there. Fine with a very nice sharp edge. Also cut through um, cardboard very well with a sharp edge. Uh, another test you can do is you, you take the knife against your fingernail at about a 45 degree angle, just the weight of the knife blade, and it catches. And if it's sharp enough to catch there, it's probably sharp enough to do a lot of the things you need to do with the blade. So what I'm going to do now is, like what they do on Forged in Fire, is I'm going to abuse this blade by chopping against this solid object. And I'm going to chop on it more than I would really want to do with a blade like this. Um, and see what damage I can do to the blade. I don't know what kind of wood this is. Okay, if I had about a half hour, I'd probably chop through that wood, but that's chopping with more or less good technique of striking at an angle and slicing as I go, which is what a blade wants to do. Uh, now I'm going to just plain abuse the blade by striking straight down perpendicular. Remember, it's not what your blade does to the log. It's what the log does to your blade. Well, one thing I can say for sure, even though it's a fairly small handle, that little knurl on the end, the little pommel, works pretty nice for gripping when you're doing that. So I'm going to take a look at the blade for a second and then get back with the testing of the sharpness. So after whacking the log about 20 or 30 times or so, I can't see any defect in the edge of that blade. There's no nicks, chips, folds, rolls, cracks. When I run my fingernail along it this way, it doesn't catch on anything. There's no tiny chips or rolls. And when I do the fingernail test this way, it, it still catches one little spot right there where it might be dulled a little bit all the way out to the tip and it still catches so it still passes that sharpness test let's see what it does on paper 
a little catch at the beginning there. Hmm. So there's a couple of spots in it they are definitely not as sharp as they were. So it's getting a bad start. Hmm. So it did lose a little bit of its sharpness, I would have to say. Parts of it are still sharp enough to cut cleanly. Apparently depending as much on my paper cutting technique as anything else. Uh, there's a spot right up there that's not quite as sharp. The main body of it is still very sharp and it passed those other sharpness tests. So for my purposes, uh, being able to slice through pieces of wood with a knife, various other bushcrafty kind of things. I would call this a rip-roaring success. That is a railroad spike knife with carburizing case hardening after the blade was forged. That's all.